Did you know that Bellatrix Lestrange actually wore a tight corset with all that black? No wonder she was always in such a bad mood. We've got real behind-the-scenes magic to thank for the amazing costumes worn by our favorite witches and wizards. Janie Tamime and her team designed everything from those memorable Yule Ball outfits to the Hogwarts house uniforms we all love and probably wore for Halloween once or twice. Some of the tricks they used helped make Hagrid seem seven feet tall and inspired realistic Quidditch uniforms that you can actually play sports in. Here are all the best behind-the-scenes wardrobe secrets straight from Hogwarts. Of course, you'll know all about Hogwarts. Hermione walking down those stairs in a dress that was seemingly made of pink starlight took our breath away the first time, and it's still taking our breath away today. This now famous pink and purple chiffon dress was chosen because it has a magical quality. And while it's elegant and sophisticated, it also looks like something a 16-year-old girl would wear. It was important to get the dress just right because it's at that moment that Ron and Harry see Hermione in a whole different light. The costume department didn't want them to see her as something she's not, so the dress was meant to help show them the different layers of Hermione, just like all the different layers in the gorgeous gown. She looks beautiful. Yeah, she does. Ron really does look like a disaster at times, disheveled clothing, and we can't ever forget his Yule Ball outfit, but a lot of effort went into Ron looking like he puts zero effort into his wardrobe. In fact, Rupert Grint was more into fashion when he was young than either of his co-stars. He took great joy in making sure Ron's outfits were always perfectly imperfect. He got so into character that he even showed up to the Order of the Phoenix premiere in true Ron fashion, wearing slacks and a Harry Potter t-shirt. You ever stop eating? Oh, I'm hungry. Bellatrix may not look like someone you'd want at your dinner party, but under all that black, she's dressed to impress. Since Helena Bonham Carter had starred in her fair share of period pieces, she had no problem with the costume department fitting her with a tight corset and long locks to add extra drama to her look. The corset also adds some medieval elements and as much elegance as Bellatrix can muster. She's from a super old traditional wizarding family after all, so the constricting wardrobe makes perfect sense. Pretty? Baby. Hot. Ivana Lynch had the time of her life playing Luna Lovegood, so much so that she used to sleep with Luna's long blonde extensions still in her hair, so she could feel like she was still in character. We can understand that since landing the role was such a huge accomplishment for her. Ivana has put so much of herself into the character that she used to help select Luna's jewelry, and she even had a hand in making that Gryffindor lion head. Together, her and the costume department created looks that quirky Potter fans are still recreating. It's a charm, actually. Keeps away the narcos. Ginny Weasley might not have been so fashion forward if it wasn't for Bonnie Wright, who loved taking a hands-on approach to styling her character. In fact, Bonnie was actually the cast member most obsessed with fashion and had more say in her costume than Emma Watson did for Hermione's wardrobe. Bonnie's inspiration comes from her parents, who are well-known jewelers. She loved to get in on the clothing and accessories her character would be wearing, so a lot of the outfits you see her in are directly inspired by Bonnie herself. It seems silly, doesn't it, a wedding, given everything that's going on. Philip Tracy designed hats for the film, and he had the best time creating the elegant French-inspired hats worn by the all-girls school. The slight angle reflects the French aspect, while the color of the wardrobe is soft, feminine, and chic, but also has hard angles to show that these witches aren't to be messed with. By the time Prisoner of Azkaban came around, the Golden Trio had already taken on their fair share of trolls, spiders, and giant snakes. The wardrobe department really wanted to remind the audience that these were just kids and they weren't always prepared to jump headfirst into danger. You probably noticed a lot of casual clothing like hoodies and sweaters, and this was entirely on purpose to make them look like they were really just young teenagers trying to figure themselves out. And it also made a little more sense than other movies, where the trio spent most of their time at Hogwarts dressed in their uniforms. Uniforms. That felt good. Not good. Brilliant. Fred and George do pretty much everything together. Apparently, they also coordinate their outfits. The costume department would put the twins in different outfits that always complemented each other. For example, if one was wearing stripes, the other might wear something with dots or squares in the same color. James and Oliver Phelps would even help pick out costumes and style their twinning looks. The coordinated outfits added a visual style of comedy to the two brothers, and it also showed that the two of them enjoyed poking fun at themselves for being twins. Oh, galleons. I'm your brother. Ten galleons.
Dumbledore's closet might be filled with elegant and magical robes, but they would have been completely different if the costume department had known he was gay. When the movies first started filming, J.K. Rowling hadn't yet shared this piece of info, but if she had, his wardrobe throughout the movies would have helped reflect that. Janie Tamime didn't go into details about the changes she would have made, but we'd love to see her interpretation of Dumbledore now that she knows the whole story. Well, being me has its privileges. Fans have always been a little upset that movie Harry didn't share his mother's green eyes, but it turns out that they did try to get the eye color right. It just wasn't worth the discomfort it caused Daniel Radcliffe. He was only 11 when he first starred in Sorcerer's Stone and has naturally blue eyes. When they tried contacts, he described them as being excruciatingly painful. If we had to choose between Daniel Radcliffe and green eyes, we'd choose Daniel every time. Better be Gryffindor! Robbie Coltrane, who played Hagrid, isn't a giant in real life. Not that you would know that, given how great of a job they did convincing us that he was humongous. A lot of work went into this movie magic, including his wardrobe. He was outfitted with huge robes in lots of layers to make him look more full-bodied. And as for the height, there was actually a body double. Martin Bayfield is 6 feet 10 inches tall, and he added to his height by wearing a realistic and creepy Hagrid mask over his face. The rest of the magic was done with clever camera angles and lots of miniature furniture. Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. Harry Potter glasses are a major fashion trend, and a lot of people wear them without lenses, just so they can pull off the look. Daniel Radcliffe said that almost every pair of glasses used in the film was lensless to avoid awkward reflections while filming, and also to avoid using Oculus Reparo every time he had an action-packed fight scene. After the series wrapped, Harry actually got to take two pairs of these lensless glasses home with him, the tiny pair from the first movie and the very last pair he ever wore in the eighth. When it comes to a wizard's favorite sport, bright colors, rugby, and American football were all sources of inspiration. The problem was that the Quidditch outfits couldn't be too heavy because the actors would be flying on animatronic brooms, which was already uncomfortable enough. The wardrobe team worked for months to get them right and ended up going with nylon to make sure they were as comfortable as they were sporty. Another fun piece of Quidditch trivia, Harry Potter's jersey number in the movies was seven and it was inspired by David Beckham. Potter is called the snitch! Gryffindor win! We all noticed that the tone of the Harry Potter films started to change with Prisoner of Azkaban. They were becoming more and more serious, and the kids were growing up, so the costume department decided to do an entire rework of the Hogwarts uniform. In the first two movies, the robes were mostly black, and the students kind of blended together. They were also a lot more juvenile. But once Azkaban came around, they decided to highlight the house colors by sewing thick lining into the robes. They also added hoods, collars, and silk ties in the house colors. Do you think we'll ever just have a quiet year at Hogwarts? No. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe wasn't the only one who got away with a piece of his wardrobe. Hermione actually kept one of her wands, the time turner, and a cloak. Perfect for a Harry Potter Halloween costume. Rupert Grint, on the other hand, took things to a whole other level by taking the golden egg from the Triwizard Tournament, but they tracked him down and took it back. However, he did get away with stealing the four off the Dursleys' house, and the crew gave him Dumbledore's Deluminator as a gift, so at least he didn't have to steal that one. Pretty. What is it? Which Harry Potter character's wardrobe is your favorite? Have you ever tried recreating any of your favorite wizarding outfits yourself? Let us know in the comments down below! Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to The Things for more great stuff! Thanks for watching, and see you next time!